How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be bringing to you part 4 in the Mercedes timing chain slash cam actuator install. Now if you haven't I would highly recommend going back and seeing videos 1, 2 and 3 before this one. You'll get all the information you need to get right up to speed with where you are in this video. I will link them in the descriptions below and I'm also going to pop a link right up here so you can jump into them now if you haven't seen those yet. So without further ado, let's get into part two of this video. So just a couple of things of note before I crack into the person of view footage of me doing this on that particular day. This is the kit here that I use to do it. This kit is not um, the 100% correct kit to do this job. It is for other um, marks, but on my engine and my type of chain that I did, this turned out to be not the exact suitable uh, kit for that. Disclaimer for you, if you do end up having this kit and you're doing the same job, it is possible to do, but it will take extra time and you need to be uh, extra cautious when doing it. Now, when I inquired about this kit, I was advised this was the right one for it, but some things or some bits of information for you that if you come across, you may be able to um, decipher which is the right one. This is the smaller piece kit. There is a larger piece kit out there, which I have linked in the description. It has more pieces. Um, I think it's six or seven of these, and then you have more connection links as well. The most noticeable differences in these is, first of all, this little piece here. When you delink the chain, this is the item that you use to relink up. It's meant to be very simple, fast, and effective. You put that through there and you can connect the old chain with the new chain and run it through. It's as simple as putting this little cap across the top and that chain stays in position, but it doesn't fit. It's not the correct fitment for that. Therefore, that wasn't able to be done. What I done was I reused one of the links that I disconnected and I connected up the old versus the new. It added on some additional time, but by just using that and then capping it on, I was able to bypass that problem. The next problem, which was a little bit more tricky, was the actual tool that's used for popping on the link, which is this item here, holding the chain in place, which is this item here, and then uh, capping or pinging um, the actual link back on so it doesn't fall off. And what I mean by that is when you're pressing the outer edge and folding it over, which is creating the locking mechanism so the link doesn't become detached. That is used with this tool here. The biggest problem I had was the actual tool itself didn't have the correct sitting type for the chain. This is meant to be a simplex and a duplex type, which means a single or a double link chain, but I wasn't able to find the correct combination for, um, for that use. Now, a viewer in the last video said that when I was using uh, the tool for delinking the chain, I was doing it wrong. Now, in fact, I was doing it exactly how I wanted to do it because uh, I did find that the plunger in these, which is the same as these two spare ones that you get here, they're all the same size. And those plungers, just like this item here, don't fit through the hole. So it doesn't actually push the pin all the way out. So when it sits down on there, it's a bigger fitment than that. So I wanted to have a view of the plunger sitting down rather than it all wound in and it being blind. So if I just, I'll quickly, sh I'll quickly set this up with how these are meant to be set up and then I'll just show you why I done what I did. So in that comment section, uh, this is the way the chain was um, meant to be set up. But I don't know if you can see exactly what I mean here, but if you look there, you can't actually see where the plunger sits down and if it's sitting on it in the perfectly straight 
uh, position. When you crank this down and you're applying pressure um, in, in this way, you want to make sure that the plunger is sitting perfectly on it. That is why I chose to do it the other way, which is this in the backed out position and the plunger sitting down. I had full visibility to how this plunger pushed that pin. The fact that the pin is bigger, uh, sorry, the fact that the plunger is bigger than the pin and that it wouldn't push it all the way through regardless is why I wanted it set up like that. So I hope that makes sense for you. I hope that kind of uh, clears up some of the uh, reasons why I done the job the way I did. Also, like I said, this job completed 100% success. No issues with the chain afterwards. It is doable, but we wanted to keep this job rolling. Did not want to ring the customer and tell him he was going to have a massive delay while we got the correct uh, set exactly if we could get through the job using the tools we have, which in fact we did, and the customer was able to get the uh, the vehicle back to him a lot sooner. So with that said, let's jump back into this video. I'm going to show you the person of view footage of me, how I set it up, and how I got this chain. And now it's not going to be the most close-up detail images because I am using the glasses that I have, which only pick up a certain amount but you will get a clear indication of how I set this uh, chain back in position when I link it up, me running it through, and then me connecting it up and then capping off those rivets so they sit in position nice and locked and we have a successful job afterwards. So let's get back into this video. So this is the old chain here, this is the new chain here, and this is the link I used across it. The uh, kit that I had didn't have the correct linking uh, pin that I could use uh, with clip to just put across that. So what I did was use an old one from the other side of the chain. So. On this side, I took another link off and then I used that on this side to push through and that's what I'm going to be using to move from one side to the other. I've just covered off the top side there, but I use this magnetic tray here just to keep the chain in position as I was setting that up. I have a cable tied in position on both sides and now it's ready to be fed all the way through. I get my side cutters and I start to cut them cable ties that are holding the chain in position. I have now successfully uh, pushed on the link. It's not crimped on in a way that it won't be able to be removed again. It's just pressed on securely enough that it's going to be able to rotate. I have my work made here, hold the chain on one side, keeping the tension upwards. I'm going to keep the tension on the other side with my left hand. And then with my right hand, I'm going to be rotating the engine around until the chain is fed all the way through. Now, as I'm doing this, please bear in mind that all the footage I have showed in today's video is the best footage that I have. I'm not in the luxury position of going to be able to set up a tripod, have a separate camera and give you the best angles every time that I do a video. I am in a busy workshop where we're trying to get jobs done for customers on a daily basis. And I can't just stop the work and uh, shoot close-ups and uh, delay the jobs as it gets done. So what I have showed today is the best footage that I had in these instances. Some of the time and chain link up was not as good as what I hoped it to be footage wise because of the lights I was using had a glare. But like I said, I have included the best footage that I could in these instances. Back to this uh, particular clip here, I am keeping it taut with my left hand and my colleague feeds it all the way through on the other side. We now have it a position where if you look at the blue mark, it's kind of hard to see, but besides my left hand, I did uh, get a Sharpie um, where you can see there's a little blue mark on the old chain. That was to show me where exactly the link was, keeping it nice and simple so that I would know when I am through all of the way. 
uh, keep it tight and then I do the same thing so I get the cable ties and I uh, wrap them around just so I know that they're not going to drop in position as I delink that chain again so I'm I'm doing that on the left hand side now and I'm doing it on the right hand side here <clears throat> now that's as I face it uh, this is the passenger side of the engine that I'm doing it on which is the intake side cable tie that nice and securely in position and the chain is now held just how I want it and that brings us to the most crucial part of this install which is reconnecting up the new chain and making sure that it is 100% secure I didn't bother uh, including the uh, old chain uh, being delinked from the new chain again because just like in the last video it's the exact same process so I would just be doubling over on that uh, in this instance I do the same thing in regards to covering on the underside of it I have a cardboard cutout and some um, cloths over the top side to make sure that nothing goes down into the timing cover it's very easy for something to slip out of your hand they're so small and you're using quite large tools to try and press them together so i urge you to make sure that you have it covered as well while you're doing this process i'm just going back over making sure that it's nice and secure as i get prepared for that being installed now bear in mind i don't have the camshaft adjusters in here nor do i have the tensioner in i install that after i have the link in but that's a very straightforward process to do that this is the difficult part of this job looking at it here I did set up this tool um, with the use of the spare plungers uh, on either side and that's just holding against the pins on the back. That's how I actually use this um, and I rotate uh, clockwise until there's enough pressure on it and then the cap is on nicely. There isn't the best image um, footage of me shown here, so I do show a close-up of the actual tool. This is the crimping side of it. This is what folds over the edges and secures that in position. So when that is in the locking tool, you're going to be pressing it like that. Right now you see me with the camshaft ad adjusters already in place. A very simple process once you have the timing chain in. I don't need to show them going back in because it's very straightforward. You want to make sure that everything is timed up and the tensioner is in. This is me setting it to the correct uh, newton meters, which in this case is over 100 newton meters. Like I said on the previous video too, one of these engines has a setting of 90 newton meters and the other is over 100. I get my colleague to hold on the back side again while I am locking this in position at the correct torque. I'm now going down to the tensioner. The tensioner is 40 newton meters. That's the correct torque for that. I'm uh, using my small torque wrench to just make sure that that's the correct tension as well i used my 3 8 to uh to wind it in and then i just made sure i got enough room to uh to torque it up it's not in the nicest position in the world and after you have that done you do have to tap a cap on again a very simple process to do that i'm taking off the camshaft tool the locker tool and i i do get a longer screwdriver just to showcase uh, where the uh, cylinder number one is in relation to when i'm rotating it around and checking the timing marks and we are now on the home straight this is me just rotating the engine around you can see that the screwdriver is dropping down and coming back up with cylinder number one and the chain guides tensioner adjusters everything is torqued back up and put back in position so what we're looking for here is afterwards when i have enough rotations done that the marks on the exhaust side are correct that the marks on the intake are correct and then on the crankshaft that on that ot that we have it nice and level with the marks accordingly if you just look down there you can kind of get an idea but in the earlier video when i first diagnosed it i do show you the timing marks in detail the engine is now running i have everything back together here and i do the usual where we go around we check for any leaks we check for anything off 
I'm uh, going in and out checking the live data on the scan tool as I'm doing this and just giving it a very thorough check over that all your work and all your connections, everything is put back like it should be. The engine in this case is all good and it's then ready for a road test. So I'm just about to come off the final road test on this Merc now and everything is driving perfectly. It's got great acceleration, there's no misfires, there's no running issues, there's no cold start issues, everything is exactly like it should be. This one serves as a reminder to remain calm when you get faults coming basically off the back of a test drive on major repairs like this there can be secondary faults in any job that you tackle into and you need to eliminate those faults by doing the usual processes that you always do like you never seen the vehicle before so even after i had done the timing i knew the timing was 100 percent good the cam adjusters were all good everything was sweet in that side your mind will automatically revert back to that problem and potentially being an issue take some time out start to think about the fault and then when you do that you can go back and do your normal diagnostic processes I got a bit caught up in this one thinking the worst straight away luckily I didn't bother jumping down that path and I started to follow the diagnostic processes like a live test drive such as using the likes of these ones which is the fall counter or misfire counter on your scan tools bringing it for a long road test this vehicle showed no signs of faults for about 10 to 15 minutes of driving but then afterwards i was getting um this is four so three number three was coming up with a um misfire uh, coming through it it was showing that there was a fault on that cylinder intermittently and when we got back in there and we reassessed that we could see tracking on the plug we could see that the ignition coil wasn't in great shape replace both of those and now we have resolved the problem i really hope you enjoyed this video guys i hope you found it informative and useful if you did please like share comment and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching